Hi everyone and welcome back to another declutter in my 12 days of declutters. Today we are tackling all of my blush except for the ones that are in face palettes that is going to come in a separate video. So if you're curious to find out if I'm going to get rid of any of these blushes then I hope that you will stick around and keep on watching. Hello to my land of overwhelm. Mainly because as I'm looking at these, I can't really see too many that I want to get rid of because blush is one of my weaknesses I've realized over the past few years. I seem to really love blush. I tend to gravitate usually towards the same few or at least once I start with one and I really like it. I use it for a long time but yet I'm, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm very possessive of my blush. I don't want to let any of it go. So let's see how I do here. <laughs> let's see how long this takes me and let's see if I can actually convince myself to get rid of at least a few. As I've mentioned before, these are more collection videos and if I do declutter, great because it will clear a little bit of headspace for me going into 2024. I would like to do an inventory and kind of restart fresh almost in a similar vein to what I did in 2023 where I assessed what I have and then started doing my monthly basket of dooms where I would pick out a few products and really test them out and decide whether I want to keep them or not and of course I was starting with some of my really older products and I think that's going to be the theme for 2024 as well my basket of dooms definitely going to come back at some point I just haven't had the time lately I lost uh, almost two weeks while being sick so I'm trying to catch up on my work on my teaching I'll probably have to teach all throughout my holiday break so I don't have quite as much time as I thought I would but that's okay Okay, for these videos it's great because I can be off camera looking like a mess filming this late at night before heading to bed and you guys won't mind hopefully. For those of you that are new to my channel, hi my name is Natalia, I'm a concert pianist who loves all things beauty and I've basically mentioned what we're doing here. We're doing a declutter and then next year I'm going to continue to rediscover my existing collection and try to bring in as few products as possible. So if you're here for that type of content and just a like to chat about makeup in general, which I certainly do, and I don't have enough people in my daily life to do that with, so I would love to have you here as a fellow makeup loving friend. Please subscribe, and let's jump into this blush declutter. All right, uh, where to start, where to start? I just pulled out, so this is how I store my blushes, and then clearly, as you can see, there's a lot of overflow, so I kind of just like stack them on the sides. It's not the best system, but it's what I'm working with and let's see how many I can get rid of. Obviously, there's no way I'm going to be able to fit everything just in here because I do not foresee myself decluttering a lot of these. Maybe I'll surprise myself and along the way, the sentimental bone in my body will suddenly shrivel up and die, but something tells me that's not going to happen. Do we want to do liquids or powders first? I don't even know. I guess I have less liquids and creams, so maybe let's get through those. Some of them I haven't even tested out yet. So we're gonna have to see how this goes. Let me move these for now off a little bit at least to the side even if you can still sort of see them. So we've got creams here. These are the creams. We've got liquids, liquids, that's a powder, we don't need that. And then I don't know, what are these considered? I guess liquids. So the liquids are gonna go here and these as well and then these i think are like cushions i haven't even used these oh no i have i guess that's why i put them in here i was not going to include in these declutters like brand new products but it looks like this i have used but clearly since i thought i didn't even you can tell i remember hmm, what i think about those nope i don't i do not remember these at all okay let's start with this this i felt like i had two of these but i couldn't find the other one so maybe i only had one this i bought on yes style this is the juicy pang blusher it is very liquidy it's like a nail polish you can 
probably see it. It's pretty. If I remember correctly, when I used it last, and this I pulled out from my uh, basket of doom back from like summertime. I don't think I actually ever used it in the summer though. I completely forgot about this. But I think when I've used it in the past, like last year, I just felt like it blended away too fast. It was just a little bit too liquidy. And once I would uh, start buffing it out, it just would disappear and I would have to layer quite a lot of it. And I don't know why this packaging, I'm just not sure there's a part of me that wants to give it another chance. And then there's a part of me that is just not sure I'm going to bother with this. So I'm going to put this in a maybe and decide in, in a minute. Let's, let's go through some things that I know I really like and I want to keep. These. So this is also Juicy Pang, same brand, but this is the cream versions. These I love. These are so easy to use. I can do it with a brush, with a sponge, with my fingers. They don't lift up whatever products I have underneath. And I specifically really love this color. I don't remember though what it is. Like it says PK01, but there's a fruit attached to it. Like how you think this one's an apple and this one maybe was fig. Can't remember, but I think if you were interested, you could find it by uh, searching the PK01 shade. And this is the RD01. So I guess red 01 and pink 01. Maybe that's how they're doing that. You can probably tell even just from looking at these that this one I flattened and this one still has a dome. I have used this one a few times and I do remember enjoying it and enough, I think, to keep it. But definitely this one is my favorite. And since I'm keeping these, to. You know what? I am just gonna let this go. This is not the kind of packaging that I think I'm really gonna reach for. It's it's messy. It's not something I can use on the go. This is great because it's not going anywhere. So these two definitely keeping. Um, in that vein, another really easy to use product is this Clinique Chubby Stick. This is the Cheek Color Balm. I think I picked both of these up at like it's EJ Maxx or Marshalls and they surprised me. I wasn't sure I was going to really like this and it was in the start of the whole cream and liquid blush craze in what was it 2021 or 22. I've used this quite a lot, especially when I first got this. This color maybe not so much. This would be a good color actually for me to test out right now in the winter time. So this should go into probably my January basket of doom and we are going to see if I'm going to keep this one, but I'm definitely going to keep this one. What is this shade? This is an 01 amped up apple and then this is an 04 plumped up peony. Keeping those as well. Warned you guys, not going to get rid of a lot. This one is brand new to me. I've tried it once on camera in a get ready and I think I've used this only one other time since so don't have too many thoughts on this definitely need to keep testing it. This is something I got in one of those Sephora favorite kits with uh, a lot of different products. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it, but had wanted to try rose ink for a long time. This is the lip and cheek color in Delphine. Have not tried it on my lips, nor do I really think I will knowing me, but I really enjoyed this as a blush. I found it to be subtle, so it is something I had to build up. I don't think this would work uh, probably for everybody, but you know, me being so fair, uh, really any blush works for me. If anything, I have to be very careful with some of the deeper colors. On me, this is very pretty. I'd like to get some more use out of this. Another fairly new to me, I mean, by now it's not really new, but I still consider this one of my newer blushes because as you will see later on, some of my blushes, I mean, I've had for a long time. But this is the Charlotte Tilbury Glowgasm Beauty Light Wand. This is the shade Peach Gasm. And I don't reach for this quite as much. I did in the beginning when I first got this, I think sometime in 22, and I did get quite a lot of use out of all the products that I got in this tube. I, I got one of the bronzers, one of the, the this blush one, and the one of the highlighters, and I just had all three of them in my makeup bag, and that's what I used for quite a few months, pretty much straight, and then once I've put it back in the drawer, to be honest, I haven't really reached for it again, but I, I'm not getting rid of this. I mean, this is 
is expensive. This is something I wanted for many, many years, and I definitely want to keep using this. I am, however, torn on these e.l.f. ones. So these I got to compare to the Charlotte Tilbury, and I at some point even did a video on that. I actually, I think it was earlier this year. It was So it wasn't in 22 that I got these. I got this Charlotte Tilbury, I think, in 23. It's just, I have no sense of time anymore. So these I bought as a comparison to the Charlotte Tilbury. And if I remember correctly, these went on really patchy. Like wherever I would place them is kind of where they would get stuck to my skin. They would stick there. And I know like a lot of people don't apply cream products um, and liquid products directly onto their skin. They take a brush or whatever. But because this already has that puff, which is disgusting, but you know, it is what it is. I do just like to, for ease, draw this on directly to my cheeks. And I felt like it was hard after that to blend it out. So even though I really have not used these a lot, I feel like I'm not gonna really wanna reach for them very often. I feel like I have much better products here. They are a little too shimmery for a blush. And mostly I think I'm gonna get rid of them because I don't don't find them to be easily blendable and they're just patchy and not really all that great. So we're gonna let these go. It's, it's a bummer because these are practically new, but you know what? Sometimes that happens. Sometimes makeup just doesn't work out. These, however, I think I'm gonna keep and test out again because these were so hyped when they first came out. I have these Flower Beauty blush bombs and I have them in Nectar and Pinched. I know I've used the Nectar no, sorry, the pinched shade quite a bit back in the day, but I haven't used them in a long time and I really need to give them another chance. You know, again, maybe this is a basket of doom contender because I want to see whether they are easily blendable and how I like them in comparison to some of my other products. I'm noticing more and more I'm less of a liquid girly and I'm more into my creams because I just find them easier to apply, easier to travel with, and all of that. This I got at TJ Maxx, as you can see, for $5.99. I can't remember if this was before Bite Beauty went out of business or right after. And I've had this in my basket of doom. I actually pulled it out from there. I know I tried it in the summer a few times, but guys, I have no clue. I, I just don't remember how I felt about it. What I do remember is I hated the packaging because trying to get the color out with this very difficult to squeeze situation was such a pain and I think I was back then even thinking I'm gonna declutter it purely because I hate this packaging. If I remember correctly Kelly Gooch used to rave about these which is probably why I picked one of these up. I was just still so curious. I think this is just gonna be too cumbersome for me to use so I think we're gonna let this one go. Um, Tower 28 Beach Please in Magic Hour. Let's smell this. I think it's fine. I really liked this. I don't think I've used this too many times. This packaging still looks too clean and nice. I mean, yes, definitely I remember using it, but I would like to get more use out of this. So we're gonna keep the Tower 28. Oh, this is a tough one. I love the packaging. I absolutely adore the packaging, but this blush disappears on me and I have dry skin and my face never eats blush right away. And this, I just have to build and build and build and then a half an hour later it's gone and that's such a pity because i really want this to work i have this in nearly mauve if i keep this it would really be just for this adorable packaging and is that really wise i mean i know the answer to that question but oh this is tough look how cute it is this is so cute but i'm i'm probably never gonna use it i'm gonna let it go i'm gonna be good and let it go this is from my uh westman atelier set i got a set with the bronzer the highlighter and the blush this is the blush in petal i really like this blush this definitely needs to stay in my collection and get more use because that is an expensive 
expensive product. All right, and then we have these last two, which as I said, this is from Holika Holika, and I don't remember. I just don't remember. I don't know what else to tell you guys. I just don't remember. Um, these are like cushion blushes. I, I mean, I guess these really need to go into a basket of doom. I don't wanna just declutter them because I'd like to at least know whether I liked them or not. So I think these are definitely going into the basket of doom. This needs to because of the color. I think this is the perfect time of the year to do it. And then and I think later in the year, I need to test the flower beauty blushes. And then I think the rest of these, I just want to continue using. These eight are definite keeps. These five, you guys will see at some point in my baskets of doom. And these five are being decluttered. Hey, I'm already doing better than I thought, but don't hold your breath. I have a feeling it's all downhill from here. I hope all of these are in frame. I just took all of my single, oh, no, one more, one more. Where we're gonna put this? I guess we'll put this right here on the side. You can tell I have a type, like clearly there are some brands that I have multiples of that I really like. And as I mentioned, some of these I've had for a really long time. Like I believe I still have the original Milani Luminoso. I've heard that they like I reformulated it or changed the color a little bit. And since I'm already talking about it, I'm gonna keep it for nostalgia. How often do I use this? Not very often, but I... Uh, especially because I have the original, I just can't let it go. Even if this is just gonna be sitting around purely for the YouTube nostalgia, I'm okay with that. I'm good with that. I'm gonna keep that. Since I'm on the topic of some older ones, these I am gonna keep not just for nostalgia, but because I still really love these blushes. These are from El Masqua. It was funny, I was just watching earlier today the Fancy Face, Tina from the Fancy Face. Uh, she posted a video about like 10 brands she completely forgot about. And El Masqua was one of the brands she mentioned. And yeah, I mean, I don't even think they're available in the US anymore, to be honest, but they used to for a hot minute there back in like 2015 or whatever maybe even earlier be a hot ticket brand these blushes they are powdery they are very powdery but they are so beautiful they are so beautiful i have the one in naked rose and lover i mean they had a lot of really lovely shades they also used to do single eyeshadows in these very similar pans just like the bb version i mean i know that they're still out there in europe and once in a while you see youtubers still feel feature their makeup in their videos, but it is so rare. But these are stunning matte blushes. They are really matte, but they don't look heavy or cakey or drying. They're just, they blend into the skin seamlessly. They're gorgeous. I love them. I pull this one out every summer and this one usually I wear all year round. I really love them. Um, clearly I love my RMS blushes, if you can't tell. I kind of wish I had them all. I don't, but I do have five and I at first got two and decided to like save on the case and just get a refill of one of the colors to be honest I kind of regret that now I wish each one had its own case but it's okay I only have one without the case I learned my lesson quick and then all the other ones I just decided I'm gonna pay the extra six dollars or whatever it was and get the cases so I have maiden's blush which I feel is like the most popular one that they make and on most people this is like their perfect nudie shade i have to be honest for me because i am so fair the one that i prefer to maiden's blush where is it is it this one no, that one is the one I've used the least. It's this one. This is in Crystal Slipper. This, as you can probably see, is the one I have used the most. I love this blush because it, for me, this is the go with any look, your basic nude blush, but it just has the perfect amount of sheen. I know some people feel like these blushes are overrated. I'm not in that camp. I really do enjoy them. This, I would say if I had to rank them, would probably be my number one, the Crystal Slipper. 
really love that shade i'm not getting rid of any of them though even though i don't use every single one the same i definitely love my tie in the summer this one's beautiful i have french rosé which of course fits the whole pink trend so well i also have key royale this is the one i've used the least so far so this is a bit deeper than the um what was this called i said french rosé this was actually would be a good shade for me to pull out right now in the winter so i'm hoping i get some more use out of this one now because i think i've only used this once or twice it looks barely touched and then of course maiden's blush is something i can use all year round and i really do enjoy it i just find it a little bit too deep on my super fair skin tone to just be like a no-brainer blush which is why i definitely do prefer crystal slipper but we are keeping all of those all right some oldies the becca ones let's look at the shades i have left so i have tiger lily which is one of the luminous blushes oh i have dahlia which is also a luminous blush this is a very deep shade i usually use it in the winter with a very light hand and then i have a one of the just regular mineral blushes so the more uh, matte one well it still has a sheen but this isn't songbird so i want to say like this is just a slightly sheeny blush and then these are more luminous oh boy what am i gonna do here even though i used to really love this in the winter i feel like by now i with my older skin and whatnot i'd probably reach more for like a lighter pink even in the winter time than these really dark uh, shades i mean it is beautiful and it's nice to have you know a couple of those off the cuff shades i'm wondering though about tiger lily because it is so much sheenier i think than the rms beauty ones i want to compare it to my tie so this is my tie and then this is tiger lily i was not really gonna swatch anything to be honest but i guess let's see what the difference is here so here's the rms blush oh they are different and then here is tiger lily so it turns out i was not expecting this but turns out of course this is much more orange and this has more of a like a peach coral vibe to it turn of events okay i also have apricot in the middle which i am almost sure i'm gonna let go of this is from wet and wild let's see It's almost like a mix of the two i used to love absolutely love these wet and wild blushes they were in my basket of doom and my favorite used to be this rose champagne and i'll be honest this time around i was kind of a bit meh about the this one i don't know if i got a chance to use apricot in the middle i mean how many blushes does one person need and how different are they actually gonna look on the cheeks i feel like between the rm and the becca i'm good i don't think i need these two so these two we're gonna declutter whoop whoop first declutter all right let me think about this one let's also open these maybe having them open will kind of give me an idea also of what i will want to get rid of I can't remember i already filmed my face palette declutter and to be honest i can't remember if i put this natasha denona duo in it or not sorry i know i'm like all over the place but regardless even though it is forming a little bit of hard pan i absolutely love this duo i travel with it all the time definitely keeping this and also just trying to clear some space the one that i just opened and the smell is so overwhelming even though i really like the product is my newest blush and that is by give beauty this is the feeling cheeky amplifying blush duo in stars aligned i've been really liking it i think i've only tried the more shimmery side and i've loved it i just wish the scent was not so heavy i have no idea what this smells like i know i've heard somebody else mention it and i feel like it's like a 90s nostalgia thing the only problem is even though i was already in the states in the 90s you know i was too busy like trying to adjust to a new language and a new life and being a preteen and a teen so if this was like some sort of a scent that came with a toy or whatever i i wouldn't know because i missed out on that part of my american childhood but 
whatever this scent is, I wish it wasn't there because it's just so overpowering. It doesn't linger on the skin for too long. It does linger for a bit, but it doesn't linger for too long. So I'm okay with that to some extent, but really brands need to stop making complexion products with that much fragrance. We don't want it. We want the beautiful packaging. The bandana packaging is awesome. I can definitely get on board with that part of the nostalgia. And I love the color and I love everything else about it. I just don't want the scent, but this is staying and I just want to close it and get it out of here. This is definitely staying. This is one of my favorite blushes. This is the Nabla Skin Glazing Glass Skin Finish Glow Powder in Truth. There was a time where I used this so much that all my other blushes were just crying, I'm sure, because this was all I was reaching for. I think it was summer of 22 that this basically was the only thing I wore on my cheeks. Okay, how similar is this? Let's see. Oh, look at that. Wow. So on my hand, at least, I don't know how it translates on the cheeks, but it is almost identical to my tie. I'm still keeping both, but that's eye-opening. That is definitely eye-opening, but I'm keeping both. Let's swatch this not-so-shimmery one, the Songbird. Where am I going to put it? Yeah, see, this one almost translates matte on the skin. It also translates a bit deeper. I mean, I guess I could sheer it out on my cheeks. Oh, I mean, I haven't used these in a while, but I remember when I did used to use them. I loved these blushes. These were so beautiful, but I just don't think I need all of them. I don't think I need all three. For nostalgia, if I can just keep one or two, I think I'm going to get rid of this just because I don't use it enough. And now do I actually need both of these because they are different finishes and different colors? What do I just pick one or maybe they just need to go into a basket of doom and then I decide which one I like more I remember liking both which is why I'm struggling so I guess let's keep both for now and we will see I think we're gonna put the basket of doom pile right here just so I can at the end see everything and it will help me select products properly in 24 right, this is a blush I do love but I hate the packaging and even though it's nostalgic I almost never reach for it this is Dallas from Benefit it's I don't know. It's just not one I use a lot. It is a great neutral blush. There's a part of me that wants to keep it because I have a feeling neutral blushes are going to come back in 24. And um, then instead of buying new ones, I can just reach into my collection. But my favorite neutral blush is this Clinique Nude Pop. I love this blush. This is my one of my all-time favorite blushes it is though starting to crumble on me you can see i mean it's a bit lighter than dallas and of course because i'm so fair and i think this is more of a no-brainer blush and this one i have to work with a little bit i also have this mark jacobs blush in uh this is the air blush in flesh and fantasy and of course depending on like where you swatch it it changes um, the color, but you could, so this one's more rosy, but these three are similar enough where I don't need all three. So I think I'm gonna keep the Marc Jacobs and the Clinique and get rid of the benefit because of the packaging. Okay. And since we tackled one of the Clinique blushes, let's tackle the other one. I used to have more and I've decluttered them in the past. Not sure if that was a smart decision because these are some of my favorite blushes ever. So the only one I kept, I think, because it was such an interesting shade was this cola pop and to be honest it's the one i use the least still to this day i'm gonna keep it because i got rid of the becca dahlia and even though this one's not shimmery but more of a satin finish i'd like to have one offbeat color so we're gonna keep that and since we're on the topic of offbeat colors i feel like i have this urban decay rapture and this nars almeria is it almeria probably almeria and while they're definitely not the same, this one seems a bit more brown or red based and this one's more of like a mauve purple. I don't know if I need both. So we've got the Urban Decay Rapture. I used to love these blushes. And again, I had a ton of them. I've decluttered them in the past. These were their Afterglow, the eight hour powder blushes, you know, back in the day when they would put realistic numbers on how long a makeup product lasts and not try to sell us with all of this 28 hour wear. 
All right, so yeah, these are definitely quite different. You can see what I mean. Like this one is more burgundy. I feel like if anything, this one's more similar to Colourpop. Let's see how that compares. Okay, so Colourpop is even more berry toned, but I don't think I need both of these. I think I'm gonna just stick to Colourpop since I already made a decision on that. And I'm gonna get rid of Nara's Almeria. What am I gonna do with this? It's a beautiful shade. I don't know if I'm ready to part with it. I think I'm going to put this in a future basket of doom. Um, a blush that I just got as a gift from my friend Kelly from Keep Beauty Real. Um, when we got together in Vegas, she actually brought this with her from her collection. And this is their ambient lighting blush in ethereal glow. I haven't even worn this yet. I haven't had a chance, but I'm super excited because I love these blushes. This is very, very light. So it was too light on her. I don't know. Wait, let's see. Can I maybe put it? Yeah you can see like it's super light but considering how pale i am i think for the winter this is actually gonna be really nice to try out and i can always focus my brush like on the places where there is a bit more pink i'm gonna definitely keep this and i need to give this a go this is a blush i've mentioned in my previous declutters i don't really use this on my face anymore because this blush is probably as old as me but this is a blush that my mom gifted to me and um she brought this over back from the Soviet Union. So this travel back in 1992, this traveled with us. And this is a Lancome blush. It's in rose something, like either rose, rose envy or something like that. But it's mostly rubbed off. I used this a ton in college. And um, yeah, this was like the only blush I owned. And now it's just, I just keep it for sentimental purposes so it doesn't really go on my face knowing me i probably wouldn't still do it because it still has the lancome smell and everything and considering it's just been me that's been using it like you know i do sanitize it once in a while and all good but it's mostly really around just for sentimental reasons something i don't use very often but i do pull out a few times a year and use as a blush topper is this cargo uh blush in louisiana i to this day love this thing i've had this for so long and it is more of like a super pinky highlighter on me i still can't let it go this has survived every single declutter of mine and i do still every so often pull it out and use it i really do love this cargo blush is cargo still around talking about brands that like nobody thinks about anymore there's one like cargo what what are they up to have they gone out of business or are they still actually a functioning brand okay these three from glowish by huda beauty i bought these last black friday on like a super duper sale i think i paid like seven or eight dollars for each of these and while they weren't my favorite blushes when i used them at the beginning and i haven't really pulled for them in recent months i really would like to still get some more use out of them i do remember enjoying them i remember them not being my absolute favorite form but they weren't bad enough for me to just easily let them go so i'm gonna keep all three test them out some more and maybe in the future i will at least downsize to just one or two of my favorite colors but for now i definitely want to keep these around all right we're getting there we're getting there we just have these few stragglers left Essence Satin Touch Blush. Essence makes great blushes. I believe they've updated the names or the formulas or the packaging or whatnot. I really love this blush. What I don't love is the packaging. And I always forget about this thing because of the packaging. And it's very sad because I think it's beautiful blush. It's again, it's one of those nude, but with a sheen blushes. I used to use this so much. I have a feeling this upcoming year, I would use it a ton again because of the way the trends are gonna change. But I just don't know, I don't know about this packaging. I feel like that's going to really deter me from using it. And then I have this one, which is not as pigmented. What was this one? Oh, this was my Marc Jacobs uh, blush. I'm almost tempted to see if they still make this shade in Satin Love and just repurchase a new one so that this packaging doesn't bother me. So I'm gonna put this in the declutter pile and maybe do a little bit of research. I don't promise that I'm not gonna pull this back out, but I'm gonna try my best not to pull this back out and just toss it because this is annoying. Love the blush though, absolutely love the blush. 
Essence blushes are great. This is one in my last declutter I said I want to keep because it's such an unusual color and it kind of gives me a little bit of that pink vibe, you know, the, the Dior blush that was so viral last year. This one has a bit more lilac though in it. So I don't know. I feel like it is unusual enough for me to go ahead and still keep it. I just, I forget that I have this weird shade it's like unlike anything else i have i mean look at that that is definitely a pinky purple that i don't have anything remotely close to like even this one which is quite pink of course it's a totally different finish because that's very matte and this is definitely not that's very very glowy and it's just a straight up pink whereas yeah it even has like some shimmer here i don't know these are really the ones that i guess are ones i should be putting all in my basket of dooms because i have no idea what to do with these because i haven't used a lot of these in a while so i have no idea how they're gonna work on my skin like these are all beautiful this one i remember loving back in the day when this came out but again look at this packaging am i going going to reach for it with this packaging probably not it's a bummer it was a beautiful blush do i have another one that is similar a basic nice peachy pink key royale seems a little bit deeper yeah that's definitely deeper french rosé is definitely much more pink oh yeah but you know what? Since I have this RMS one, this French Rosé, I feel like even though this has a bit of a different sheen to it because it has that gold speckling in it, I don't know if I need both. I was gonna keep this initially because it is a beautiful blush, but do I really need both? This is in Sunlit Rose. This is the Baked Blush and Brighten by Laura Geller. I know everybody's forgotten about these, but these were gorgeous blushes. I don't know if I need it though. I think I can let this one go. Not because I want to, but because... I think it's just time. And I think I'm also going to let go of the color pop. And to be honest, as cool as this shade is, I think I'm going to let go of the Bobbi Brown as well. I just never reach for it. I don't know. Do you guys think I'm making a mistake? Should I keep these more unusual colors? Let me know in the comments if you think I should keep any of them. All right, we've got just a few left. I have this other Laura Geller blush. This is one of their gelato swirls. And this is in Rosewater. Here's another pinky shade. It kind of also reminds me a bit of the RMS blush in French Rosé. I almost never use this. I'm gonna let it go. However, I am going to keep this Orgasm X from NARS. I've really liked this, first of all, and second of all, it's great for travel. I have no space. So there's that blush. Look at me, I said, I'm not gonna swatch, and here I am. That's a beautiful shade too. Yeah, I think between, I mean, yes, this is more coral, but I think between this and the RMS, I'm good on some of these more sheeny, pinkier blushes. The only one I'm not sure of is this, this um, dual intensity blush from NARS in Adoration. It's another pink. Ooh, wow. Oh boy. It's not playing around. I feel like if I remember correctly, I was keeping it actually for the highlighter because I really liked that highlighter. Oh yeah. That's really nice. Yeah, I'm gonna keep this. And I'm, if anything, I'm gonna put it in a future basket of doom. I said I'm keeping the Nors. So the only one left is the Lorac Buildable Blush. This is the Matte in Aura. I used to absolutely adore this blush. It's extremely powdery. And I feel like I need to give it one more chance in a future basket of doom. Let's swatch it and see what we think. Yeah, you can see. You see how powdery that is? Wow, I went a little little heavy on that. Oh, that's a, such a pretty dusty, dusty pink. It's right there if you guys can see it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna keep it and test it and see. That's really pretty. That would be a really pretty winter shade. So this is gonna go in the basket of doom pile. Here are the powder blushes we are keeping. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty-one, five for the basket of doom contenders like as soon as possible so 26 keeps and one two three four five six seven eight nine ten that i am decluttering 
Wow. Okay, I did better than I thought I would. I'm still a little bit on the fence about a couple of these, but hopefully um, I won't get weak and none of them will get back to my collection and I will actually keep it at these numbers because I'm happy with that. If I could really get rid of these 10, and what did I do? Five of the liquids, so 15 blushes that I'm getting rid of, which means more blushes here on this side that I can actually focus on and try to use a bit more and we'll see if all five of these will stay or some of them will get decluttered throughout the year. I was expecting worse. Let me know how you think I did. I know sometimes the internet has very high decluttering expectations, but I'm very happy actually. So I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope that you've been keeping up with my other declutters. If not, I have the playlist linked down below. I would love for you to check them out. And other than that, I hope that you guys are doing really, really well having a wonderful holiday season, continuing to stay safe and healthy, take care of yourselves and those around you. And I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye guys.